This is Tammy Carter with Word Alive Bible Study. God bless each and every one of you. On tonight, we're going to continue teaching on the healing series. It's been a while since I've been in um, the forum talking about healing, but we're going to continue. And on tonight, we're going to talk about four levels of healing. So it is good to be back teaching. God bless each and every one of you. I pray that something is said tonight that will impart understanding uh, to your life that will bring forth healing in your body, in your mind, you know, in our souls, and our emotions. So before we go into the Word of God, we're going to start with prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to come before your people to bring forth the Word of God. Father, we just worship you in this place. Oh, God, we ask you create within us a clean heart and renew a right spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that as we teach that the atmosphere will be filled with faith, God, that even as uh, your people hear the word of God, that they will receive healing, they will receive deliverance, hallelujah, they will receive peace in their mind, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that your word will lift up a standard, God, that your word will totally transform our minds, Father, so that we can receive the fullness of God. You said in your word, will thou be made whole? And so, Lord, the answer tonight is yes. We want to be made whole, Father, in our bodies. We want to be made whole in our mind. We want to be made whole, God, in our spirit. We thank you for healing right now, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that you are concerned about the whole person, spirit, soul, and body. So we praise you for it right now, God. We thank you, God, that Hallelujah, that the anointing will increase upon our lives and even in our atmosphere, fear God. I thank you, Lord God, that we are, we are going from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Hallelujah, and we thank you for it now. Hallelujah, pour out your spirit, O oh God. Glory to God. Let the anointing destroy yokes in the name of Jesus. Yokes that have been attached to our lives, to our children and our children's children for years. I thank you that those things are being uprooted by your spirit, by your word, for you sent your word and you healed. So Lord, I thank you for healing now. It's happening right now in Jesus' name. For now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we believe you, God, even though we don't see it, even though we can't feel it all the time, we believe that you are working on our behalf, God, to bring forth manifestation in our lives. So we thank you for it, God, in advance, God. We praise you for it. And from time to time, Lord, help us just to close our eyes and meditate upon you. Meditate upon your word. Think on those things that are lovely, those things that are pure, those things that are of a good report, God, and not entertain the suggestions of the enemy, the things that he would desire to plant in our minds, knowing that your word is true. The word of God says, let God be true and every man a liar. So Lord, we exalt your word tonight above our circumstances. We exalt your word tonight above those things that we can see. Your word is exalted in our lives, God. And Father, help us to be obedient, to apply the word. Help us not to be just hearers only, but doers of the word so that we can walk in the manifestation of it. And as we go into the word, we pray for the Holy Spirit to bring enlightenment. Teach us, oh God. Teach us, Lord, what we need to know. Hallelujah. Even as we seek you, God, impart new knowledge, impart new revelation in our hearts and in our minds. We thank you now, God. We activate Psalms 91. We thank you, God, because we are under, in the secret place under the shadow of the Most High. Father, we decree and declare no evil shall befall us. No plague shall come, not our dwelling. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We take this time out even to pray as uh, students go back into the schoolhouse. Father, administrators, teachers, counselors, workers, uh, custodians, bus drivers. Lord, we decree and declare the blood of Jesus. Cover them now. Father, we bind premature death, hallelujah, in our lives and our children and our children's children. Those who are listening to this prayer in the systems, we plead the blood of Jesus right now. Let your angels go forth, God. Be around the buses. Be around the schools. Be around our homes. We thank you for peace in our home. Uncover all unfruitful works of darkness, Father God. And let deliverance and healing be our portion. Your protection be our portion. Angelic assistance be our portion. Glory to God. Prosperity and peace be our portion right now. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen and amen. One thing about going into prayer is sometimes it's hard to pull out. Glory to God. I thank God for the spirit of prayer, just the spirit of intercession to pray, to seek the face of God. But we're getting ready to go into the word of God. Glory to God. We're talking about tonight four levels of healing. 
four levels of healing. And we're going to go ahead and go over all four areas or levels of healing. And then we're going to break those things down. Uh, the first level of healing is divine health. Uh, the second is healing, which can be gradual. Uh, healing is normally gradual. Uh, what is not gradual is a miracle. And so you have divine health, number one. Number two, we have healing, which is gradual. And number three, we have miracles. And then number four is deliverance. Let me go over that again. Number one, divine health. Number two, healing, which is usually gradual. Number three is miracles. And number four is deliverance. So we're going to start with divine health. What is divine health? Divine health means that you're walking, you know, uh, you're walking in health, you know, health, you're healthy. Uh, you are conscious of your, your health. And because you are conscious of your health, you're going to do those things that are necessary to stay healthy. And so that's one that's very challenging from time to time because we know certain things that we put in our body are not healthy. They're good, but they're not healthy. And so it's sort of hard sometimes to stay away from those things because when you go into the grocery store, you're seeing all the good stuff. You know, most of the, most of the stuff is, you know, the carbohydrates that are, uh, you know, uh, not good for us that will, if we eat in excess, when we put it that way, they're not good. But Foods that are processed are normally not good. But when we go into our stores, that's mostly what we see. When we go into our restaurants, that's mostly what we see. Also, we know that the carbs and um, the processed foods are normally cheaper than the healthier foods. And so those are things in society that, you know, especially if you are, um, you know, limited in your income and uh, you want something real quick, you know, there goes the fast foods, the processed food and a lot of carbs. And so those things are sort of hard to stay away from. You have to really be intentional when you go into the store or when you're eating, especially when you worked all day and you're rushed and you just go ahead and want to eat. And so what has happened in society, one of the shifts that have taken place when it comes to uh, being healthy um, are the um, delivery services, the food delivery services. And there are several. There are several. Um, you know, you have one called Factor. Um, and I didn't write out all my list down, uh, but there are several of the different food services that are available. And so, you know, they have choices now. You have options. And sometimes people still say that that's kind of high. But, um, you know, you have the most mostly you have the health, um, health, healthy foods that are very, very expensive. And then you have, of course, the salads. And sometimes I don't know about you, but sometimes the salads um you get tired of eating a salad. So you have to be creative. You have to be creative with your fruits and your vegetables and, and different things. And so we want, why? Because we want um, our bodies to be healthy. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, give you uh, a few of those services as I just look at that. Hadn't really intended on talking about that, but just thinking about um, the different di delivery services that you can um, have. And so... Let me see, can I find a few of them? If not, we'll come back and we'll talk about that another time. But there are many meal delivery services that are out there. And so I think I'm pulling those up uh, now um, when you start looking up stuff and then you go on a little uh, bunny trail. <laughs> so there are several of them. And, uh, and uh, let's see, we have, um, they got one called Cook Unity. I never heard of that one. Um, Cook Unity, they have one called Sun Basket. Now, some of these I have never heard of. Uh, Daily Harvest, I've heard of that one. And another one that's real popular that I see all the time is one called Factor. And and so, just in case you want to write some things down, one is called Freshly, um, Splendid Spoon. Another one I've heard of that's quite popular is Home Chef and um, Bistro MD. And one that I have used called Hello Fresh, and they're very good. But you, uh, those meals are, uh, they send you the, like a gro the groceries, you know, the, uh, and you sort of follow the menus. They have nice little menus that you you follow. And I haven't tried Factor, but you have some that are pre-made that all you have to do is heat up uh, in your your microwave or um, however you would heat those up in your oven, and and so forth. And so there are several, there are several that uh, if you look them up online, you'll find that there are several that are there. And like I said, I, um, they have one, like I said, I think I said Home Chef already, but the one I said I used was HelloFresh. And so 
There are several ones that you can pick and choose and look at how much they cost. But I believe that they're trying to make, um, you know, they're trying to make things a little bit more affordable because it can get very expensive when you're trying to eat healthy. You know, so you have, uh, you have the different types of ovens, convection ovens and, and the different types of ovens that you use that can uh, quickly heat those up. It does save time. Uh, financially, depends on how much you spend in money uh, per month. So that is something to think about. But divine health or being healthy, uh, uh, 3 John 2, 3 John 2 basically have just pretty much one chapter. So 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. In other words, you are going to be healthy. And we're not going to talk about the prosperity portion. We're talking about the health portion. But you're going to be in health according to knowledge. So a lot of times when I say according to knowledge, a lot of times we eat the way we've been taught to eat. The uh, way it has come down through generations. And so um, sometimes we have to make adjustments to that. Because a lot of times the way we have been taught to eat is not correct. And so with me, one of the struggles I've had is... Um, Carbs. Everything that you like got carbs in it, whether it's um, fast food or whether, um, you know, the French fries and so forth, the bread, um, whether it's potato chips and all the chips you snack on throughout the day, anything with potatoes, anything that's white, it's sugary stuff. You know, um, a lot of stuff, you know, and, and you have to be intentional about uh, to go towards the fruit and the vegetables and so forth. And so you have to be intentional uh, when you go shopping uh, because, you know, we're going to be in health, according to 3 John 2, according to our knowledge, according to what we understand. So if as we prosper in our knowledge uh, realm, as we begin to learn to do better, you know, when you know better, we need to do better. So that's a big ouch right there. Sometimes we don't. We know and we don't. So um, we have to look at alternatives to what we are putting in our bodies so that we can maintain uh, healthiness because you know we know that if we cry out to God and we apply his word that he's going to heal us but it's more powerful to uh, walk in, in divine health and so divine health be healthy how to eat um, when we talk about being healthy um, also that includes um, getting enough sleep and so that is something I've been intentional about I said you know uh, I'm a night owl, but it's not wise to lay down late and, and wake up early. Even the, even the Psalms say that. And so um, getting enough sleep is important. Seven and eight hours is important uh, to get that sleep. Also exercise. We're talking about maintaining our, our health. Uh, exercise. Um, one, one thing I have a tendency to do is walk around the neighborhood. I also have club membership, which I rarely, rarely use, to be honest. But I do have um, in my room upstairs, I have the treadmill that I use often. Also up and down the steps because it's something about going up and down the steps that helps you uh, your workout. And so, um, yeah, I have uh, that. I have another machine that um, I stand on. I, f- I forget what, what it's called, but it sort of vibrates your whole body. And you have to have the little arm bands that you pull up and down. So those are things that I use in the home. And I like, um, you know, walking the neighborhood and I like exercising in my home. It's just it's just more convenient, um, you know, based on my lifestyle. So you have to find out, you know, what um, suits your lifestyle and, and make that work for you. And so, you know, even with the club membership, it's not very costly. So it is a good investment. And also, you know, this is, you know, being talked about a little bit more uh, these days because we know that um, eating eating unhealthy has been cheaper, and so I, I believe that society is becoming more conscious about the health. Uh, you know, considering all the things that's been happening uh, during this period of uh, COVID, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, uh, and, and how we've had to make changes to make sure that we're getting in a healthy place. And so, um, like I said, we you know your lifestyle, so you have to do things that will adapt to your lifestyle, and so forth, and invest in yourself. Take care of yourself. You know, we're talking about that uh, strongly and in, in, um, lately in, in the past few years, you know, investing in your mental health, investing in your uh, physical health and so forth. So when we talk about divine health, we're not just talking about the body. We're talking about the soul, your mind, you know, um, stress, stress that keeps you going all the time. And then, you know, it's hard to stay healthy if you're under a lot of stress. It, it causes uh, heart problems and it just causes 
you know, chemical unbalances and all types of problems throughout your life. So for that reason, especially during the pandemic, a lot of people have made job changes. I know a couple of years back, probably about three years back, three and a half years back, I made some changes about where I work at based on the amount of stress I had to deal with. And at the time, you know, I was making more money doing what I was doing. You know, same type of job, just a different county. And, you know, the stress level was just too high and, I, and it just wasn't worth it. And so I, I began to look and for a different a location to work in a different county and God opened up the door for me and I was able to go there and it decreased my stress probably by half and that was such a blessing to my life and to my body so you know exercise sleep learning to love yourself uh, take care of the body the temple that God has given us it is the temple of God and we have to take that in consideration you know uh, our life is not our own we've been bought with a price and so we've got to glorify God in our bodies and be more conscious about taking care of ourselves. And once again, I mentioned about, you know, COVID, um, when people get begin to go to the doctors to see, uh, look at the levels of vitamin D because the uh, COVID was running rampant in people who had very low vitamin D. And so um, that is very important. Uh, vitamin D uh, decreases um, your chance of heart disease, such as hypertension, high, heart failure, stroke, and um, also according to research, it may uh, make severe um, uh, sicknesses like flu and COVID less likely to occur. Or even if you do get it, it will not be as extreme as it would be with someone who had low levels of vitamin D. And one thing that I found out about, and I've been using this for years, is the black seed oil. And the black seed oil, if you will look it up, go to Google, look it up. We grew up on cod liver oil, but didn't know about black seed oil and the benefits. And so it's, it is sort of a cure-all because it attacks inflammation in the body. It is real good, guys. These are things that God has put in the earth, the herbs for our healing, for the healing of the nations. And so if you get a chance, if you haven't heard of black seed oil, look it up. It's amazing that black seed oil has been around all the time, but it was not talked about. And now that we have the Internet, the World Wide Web, that we can look up all these different things and also make sure that you're checking with your doctor because if you are on a blood thinner, then you can't take black sea oil because it has some of the same properties to thin the blood. Uh, there was a testimony of a lady I, was, I saw on Facebook. She was a minister and she had blood clots. Uh, and so um, the doctor wanted to bring her in to do more extensive tests on her blood. Uh, unbeknown to the doctor, she began to take black sea oil as recommended by a friend. And when she went back to the doctor, the blood clots were gone. And so, the, like I said, the blood, uh, the black sea oil has um, properties like a blood thinner. It thinned, you know, so uh, apparently it attacked those blood clots. But um, it is natural. It's all natural. No side effects. But always check with your doctor. I'm not a doctor. So check with your doctor to ask them about, you know, any type of interactions with any type of medicines that you may be taking. Like I said, it's all natural. But if you are on a blood thinner, you cannot take it. But uh, black sea oil, once again, it attacks inflammation in the body. And so all uh, diseases are rooted in inflammation. So, you know, if you can add that to your diet, that would be very beneficial. Ways that it has helped me is I've had severe allergy problems being in the sand hills for many, many years. And it caught, uh, being in the sand hills caused me a lot of uh, problems with my sinuses. And so um, I did not know that when I started taking black seed oil, that it was going to lessen and almost wipe out the very need of having um, uh, any sinus medication. Um, sometimes when it, the weather you know, is very humid, you know, um, then you know I'm, I may have to to take um, some sinus medication every blue moon. Is, but for for a couple of years, I didn't take any because the black seed oil was affected, and probably because I wasn't taking it every day. And so I'm having to, you know, make sure that each and every day that I'm taking what I need to take. Because when you stop putting those things in your body, uh, those supplements, those herbs that are helping you, when you stop taking it, then eventually you're going to feel the effects of uh, other symptoms coming on that you were uh, initially fighting against. So be consistent uh, to um, take those things uh, if you if, if you can take it. And then uh, for the past few years, we've been hearing a whole lot about intermittent uh, fasting and um it's good. It's really good for the body. You know, it gives the organs a rest. And it's also a way of, um, of 
consecrating yourself before God. We know we talk about fasting. We talk about the Daniel fast, the 40 day fast, three day fast, seven day fast, consecration and so forth, you know, fruits and vegetables and so forth. But intermittent, you know, just uh, takes portions of the day to fast and portions of the day to eat. And it's also healthy for the body. And so um, that those are some things that uh, will help us to walk in healing. And, and um, so so number one is divine health, divine health. And I believe that's all we're going to talk about in divine health. Um, let me just read a scripture over here in uh, Daniel, in Daniel, um, when we talk about um, divine health, divine health. Um, over here in Daniel, the first chapter, I want to read about this because we're talking about eating healthy. So I want to bring this out over in Daniel, uh, the first chapter, verse eight, it says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine he drank. Therefore, he requested uh, of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So, you know, they were supposed to have been sitting down to eat at the king's table. And so um, he did not want to be, um, you know, he was not trying to be uh, rebellious. But at the same time, he took a stand for God. And so God gave him favor. And verse nine says, now God brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. So because of his lifestyle and how he was consecrated before God, he had favor. And it says, um, and the prince of the eunuch said unto Daniel, I fear my Lord who hath appointed you meat and drink for why should he see your faces worse like the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. So he was basically fearing Daniel's life because he refused to eat at the king's table. But then in verse 11, it says, then Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Now we know that Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and, and Azariah, those were three Hebrew boys who we would later refer to as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so in verse 12, it says, Prove thy servants, uh, I beseech thee, ten days, this is Daniel speaking, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. In other words, pulse uh, meant vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, and so forth, and seeds seeds that they could eat and in verse uh, 13 it says then let our countenance be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat so he says after 10 days of eating this pulse or the vegetables fruits grains nuts and seeds he said i want you to compare us to those who ate the king's meat as thou seest deal with thy service so he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days Okay, and it says in verse 15, and at the end of the 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. So here it is, uh, 10 days, he is eating the vegetables, the fruits, the grains. That's another uh, time of of consecration. um, If you want to add that type of consecration to your your life. And during that time, uh, the countenance, their countenance, were so uh, healthy looking compared to those who ate meat. And so when we're talking about health, being in, in divine health, and just being healthy. And so that is a way that uh, we look at healing is in the things we eat. And so when Daniel ate those um, vegetables, fruits, grains, nuts, seeds, whatever he ate under the um, word pulse, um, he looked healthier. His countenance was healthier. And I want to give this a, tes- a testimony right here. I remember when I was in college, and I would go home for the summer. And when I went home one summer, you know, my mom, she was like in her 70s. Um, and I looked at her countenance um, and her countenance was bright. Her countenance was glowing. And I said, Mom, I said, you've been fasting, haven't you? She said, yeah, how did you know? I said, because your countenance is glowing. And it's amazing because I was young, guys. I was like in my 20s and my mom was in her early uh, 70s. And so her countenance was just glowing with the presence of God. And it is amazing to me because I know that she, you know, she worked in a factory, a poultry factory. And, you know, I know that her days sometimes were hard. She had to stand on her feet all day and clean the chicken and and do different things to the chickens. And um, when I looked at her and I saw her, I could realize that God was keeping her and he was sustaining her. And like I said, she uh, was up in this like 70 
uh, early early seventies, and I was amazed. I was amazed. And it could have been could have been the late sixties because it was like we were forty. She had me when she was thirty nine. So if I'm in my twenties, you know, twenty two, twenty three, then she could have been like six. She could have been her sixties. But either way, you know, sixties, um, uh, mid sixties or, or early seventies. I, I truly believe that it it, it was her in her 60s but anyway her countenance was so bright it was glowing with the presence of God and that's a lesson right there so that is a confirmation that when you seek the face of God if you know through consecration that the presence of God and the glory of God will shine through on you because you're being strengthened with his spirit you know he's you, he is strengthening your spirit and it's glowing upon your countenance so that's just encouragement right there that even when we are um taking care of our temples and we're eating and we're paying attention to what we're eating it, it, it causes everything to come into alignment in our bodies because of the health that's springing forth from you know what we're eating and so doctors will will say that most of diseases you know all diseases major diseases that are taking place now has a direct correlation to diet and so you know what if children were taught this in um, elementary school what if they were taught these things and so um, it, it behooves us just to just be more conscious of how we are uh, handling our bodies. And so that is the, the first level of healing uh, in the four levels of healing teaching for tonight. The next uh, one I want to talk about is healing, the, the gradual healing or just healing. And so we have divine health and we have healing where we see teachings taking place all throughout um, the Bible. And so, um, as I said, healing we're going to talk about miracles after we talk about healing because one is gradual and the other is instant. So, you know, most of the time healing is something that is taking place gradually in the body. If it's instant, then it's called a miracle. And so I want to um, take a look at um, Luke, the 17th chapter, where it talks about how uh, Jesus healed 10 lepers. He healed 10 lepers, Luke, the 17th chapter, and I'm start at verse 11. And it says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that he's passed through uh, Samaria. He passed through the land of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, you know, they stood afar off because they were considered unclean. And verse 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. Now listen to this in verse 14. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now watch this. Verse 15. Now we're, they were healed now. And it's going to confirm it in, fifth, in verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. So as they went, he told them to go show themselves unto the priest. You know, and he spoke a word. But the, as he spoke that word, that word of wisdom, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost, guys. I feel the Holy Ghost. Um, as he flowed in the Holy Spirit of uh, the word of wisdom, gave them a, a word of wisdom, told them, say, go show yourself to the priest. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Or we can say it this way. As they were going, they were being healed. Hallelujah. And in, in, in verse 15, once again, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, so he didn't get healed Immediately, I tell you, I felt the building up of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. He didn't get healed immediately, but as they were going. See, that's I need to stop there because the Holy Spirit wants to say something right there. A lot of times God is healing us when we ask him to heal us. But because we don't understand the word uh, that our faith has not been built up. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. We uh, We assume that because we don't see it. That is not happening. Now, there are some instances, and we're going to see a little bit later, where there is a demon spirit that's present. And that is what, keeping the healing from manifesting. It's keeping the healing. Let me say this also. Also, a lack of obedience. A lack of obedience will um, cause uh, the healing to, to be hindered. To be hindered. 
And I remember the Lord speaking to me prophetically and he began to say unto me, because you have obeyed me to begin to teach in the area that I have called you to teach in, I'm allowing the healing to begin to manifest. And also I'm believing God for healing my son. But a lot of times when we neglect to do the will of God and we hold back, it causes a delay to take place because our obedience is delayed. So our blessing is delayed. So a lot of times we wonder why stuff not showing up. He says, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So sometimes you have to press through the tiredness, press through the weariness, press through whatever you're going through so that you can um, get to the other side. And on the other side is your healing. On the other side are the miracles. On the other side are your blessing. And sometimes the enemy will put, you know, whatever God asks us to do, it, it, it seems like there is, um, it's an unsurmountable mountain or it, it, it seems like it's something that we just feel like in ourselves we can't do. But if we will begin to move forward and obey God, he will he come on so behind. He will give us the strength to accomplish. And not only will he give us the strength to accomplish, but as we go, we are being healed as we go. So a lot of times we will say, I don't feel like doing this. I, you know, I'm tired and I feel overwhelmed. But at the same time, we find a way because the flesh is always going to find a way to do what it wants to do to please itself. But we have to press into the will of I hear the Holy Ghost press into the will of God. If y'all would excuse me for a minute, I got to write that down. Press, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, press into, glory to God, press into the will of God. Because in his will, I hear that. In his will, you, you will find everything you need. You will find everything, everything you need. Amen. I had to write that down. It is will. You will find everything you need. Press into the will of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we just praise him right there? Glory to God. I thank God for the Holy Spirit flowing because we can do nothing without him. We can do nothing without God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Glory to God for the word of God. Press into the will of God for your life because in the will of God, there's healing for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Press into it. Press into it. Glory to God. And so as they went, they were cleansed or they were healed. And, and according to verse 15, and one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back with a loud voice and glorified God. Now, I like to, I like to read the rest of it, although we've already made our point. But in verse 16, it says, he fell down on his uh, uh, he fell down on his face at his feet, at Jesus' feet, gave him thanks. And, and, and he was a Samaritan. And then verse 17, and Jesus answered and said, were, not, uh, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? See, that just, just, isn't that just like people, you know, but we don't look to people. We look to God. You know, he, he's going to bless you for your labor. He's going to bless you for your faithfulness and your obedience. He's going to bless you when you are a blessing to others. You know, and you don't, you know, people not, you don't expect, you know, people to come back. Uh, don't even put that out. They don't, don't even have that expectation. Just know that God is going to reward you because, you know, people may come back and say, you know, thank you for taking your time out to do uh, this kind deed or, or thank you for what whatnot. But, you know, you look to God. He is the, he is your rewarder. You don't look to man. But Jesus, you know, Jesus said, did I not cleanse 10 of them? And only one came back to uh, worship. One came back to say, thank you. Uh, one came back to just worship him. Hallelujah. And uh, there are not found uh, there are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And that's what Jesus said. This stranger came back to give the glory to God. And, and the other nine, they went about their way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to read this as well. Um, he says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, um, let me read, read this in verse 18. They are not found that return to, uh, to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. So he said his faith had made him whole. Because, you know, at the beginning, they began to cry out to him, Have mercy. God, have mercy on us, God. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Say that with me. Have mercy upon me, Jesus, and heal me. Have mercy upon my children and my children's children and heal them, Father. Have mercy. Glory to God. Sometimes we just need to humble ourselves and cry out to God. And he said um, in verse 20, when he when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and said, 
The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo, lo, here, for the kingdom of God is within you. I love reading that portion because um, that's powerful. That's a whole other teaching, but that's powerful. So we, we're talking about healing. That Healing is uh, usually gradual, and, and the miracle is what happens instantane, instantaneously. Um, and we, have, we may all have experienced sicknesses. Um, and, you know, whether, whether it was a cold or was it a headache, it was not unto death, but that's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. And you might say, well, no, when people get cold, they don't die. But you, don't, you never know when once a situation can turn worse. You never know the impact that prayer has and being in the presence of God that cuts that thing short, that causes healing to spring forth. Just let me uh, give you this strategy here. Make sure that you're not speaking anything negative. Because once you believe God for healing, you release your faith because you don't see it happen instantly. Because as we said, healing happens gradually. When you don't ha- see that thing happen instantly, the enemy has a tendency to talk to your mind to tell you, well, you didn't get nothing. God didn't hear you and he's not going to do. He's not going to heal you. you. You have to shut that down because if not, you're going to speak out of your mouth something that's going to cut that healing process short. So continue to praise God. Continue to believe God. Doesn't matter how long it's taken. Just believe God and worship God and thank him for your healing. And so we're going to talk about, you know, when you don't get healed, sometimes it's according to your confession that you're canceling out the, the thing that God sent. You know, you know, he sent his word and healed, healed to heal you. But if you're speaking words of doubt and negativity, you're going to cut that thing off. But sometimes there's a presence, as I said before, of the evil spirit, which is which which keeps the healing from manifesting. And so let's let's move um, into the next level before we get to deliverance. And so we talked about divine health. We've talked about healing, which is gradual. Now we're going to talk about miracles. I'm feeling the presence of God. I'm just, you know, sometimes, you know, in your body, you're like, okay, well, I'm a bit tired. I don't think I'm going to um, move forward. But I know I needed to move forward. And you need to move forward, too, to obey God. So uh, once again, this is Word of Life Bible st- Study. We are here every Wednesday at 7. I've taken a break, of, you know, um, transitioning from... Um, uh, you know, teaching. I'm a, I'm a school teacher. Transitioning from the, teaching during the regular year, uh, then the summer, and, and, and different things. Just transitioning, and then needing to rest. And so uh, we're back uh, to Word of Life Bible study every um, Wednesday at seven. And so it, it 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 is necessary that we obey what God has given us the assignment. He's not going to give you your next until you obey Him with with uh, what He has called you to do now. So we talked about divine health. We've talked about healing, which is usually gradual. Number three is going to be miracles. Miracles. A miracle is a divine interruption into a present condition. Uh, A divine interruption into a present condition. We can also say um, it is a supernatural intervention into the natural. A supernatural intervention into the natural. In other words, um, that that divine interruption can uh, into a present condition can be. Sickness. You know, you can get healed immediately or mentally. You know, your your mind can just shift. Glory to God because God, the presence of God, the spirit of God, the word of God has touched your mind. And all of a sudden it something has shifted. Something has changed immediately. It could also be uh, it could be mentally or it could be uh, physically. And so um, let's look at some examples of uh, healing. Um, one is in um, Mark. The first chapter. Mark the first chapter. Let me make sure I'm on track here. Mark the first chapter, um, verses 30 and 31. Verse 30 says, But Simon's wife's mother, Simon's wife's um, mother, or his mother in law, uh, laid sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once so they you know Jesus was you know there and so they told him when he came there that uh, Simon's mother-in-law had a fever in verse 31 said so he being Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she served them so that is a miracle he come on so immediately there was a divine interruption into her present condition the supernatural hit her natural condition and immediately there was a change 
And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that as we teach on this, Father, that the portals of heaven are open unto us. Oh, God, the presence of God is being poured. We thank you for increased angelic activity. We thank you for the power of God that's present to heal, not only to heal, but to bring forth miracles. I thank you, Father, that your power and your presence will increase in our lives so much so that miracles will begin to happen. I decree and declare, God, that even though we may not see some things in the natural, we thank you, God, that you are not only healing, God, but you are causing that healing to be um, expedited. You're causing it to be expedited so much so that miracles begin to take place where we are seeing instant healings, instant healings, instant healing. Lord, help us to have the faith, God, to begin to move in miracle ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. One thing I've learned from personal experience is that the more you fast and pray and study the word of God, you know, study the word of God along healing. If that's what you're believing him for is healing or whatever you're believing him for, but we're talking about healing. But when you begin to fast, it, it brings the flesh under subjection and prayer. Fasting and prayer brings the flesh and the, the soul, the mind under subjection. And it causes you to be more sensitive to the spirit, man. And as you feed yourself in the word of God, and as you begin to pray to build up your spirit, man, your spirit, man, begin to weigh heavier or begin to carry or begin to be the weightier part of your being to subdue the flesh and the mind so that the spirit is in control. And the more the flesh is crucified, the more the life of Jesus Christ in your life begin to manifest. And so we want the spirit man to be dominant and not the flesh and not the mind. Uh, because we don't live out of our mind. We are a spirit. And, and you know, our mind is what contacts the world because, it's, you know, we're in the physical. But when it comes to spiritual things, we need to bring our flesh and our soul under subjection to the spirit man so that we can begin to see God work miracles in our lives more readily, more easily and more impactfully in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, that was... Um, when uh, the first miracle we talked about Jesus curing Peter's mother-in-law over in Mark, the first chapter, verses 30 and 31. Let me go to another example over in Mark, the first chapter, verses 40 through 42. Jesus healed a leper. So this is a different occasion where he healed uh, a leper. And it says um, in verse 40. On one occasion, a uh, leper came, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation because it just so uh, gives you so much uh, detail. On a, one occasion, a leper, not the ten leper, but a leper. So this was a different occasion. A leper came and threw himself down in front of Jesus, pleading for his healing, saying, You have the power to heal me right now if you really want to. Verse 41, Jesus being deeply moved uh, with tender compassion reached out and touched the skin of the leper and told him, of course I want to be, uh, of course I want to. Uh, And then he said, be healed. And so now um, be cleansed. In other words, he says, of course I want you to be healed. So now be cleansed. Let me read that the right way. Uh, It says, Jesus reached out and touched the skin of the leper and told him, of course I want you to be healed. So now be cleansed. And um, of course I'm reading from the Passion Translation. And in verse 42, it says, instantly, his leprous sores completely disappeared. Uh, the King James says immediately. So immediate means instant. So we're looking at a, at a miracle taking place. And his sores were completely, they completely disappeared. And his skin became smooth. And the leprosy left him. And he was cleansed or he was healed. Uh, NIV This is the NIV uh, version. The leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Glory to God. So we see Jesus healing uh, this leper. We see him being moved with compassion. And we'll see that throughout the scripture that, um, you know, the sensitivity of how Jesus was moved is how we should be moved. We should have a compassion to begin to move. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost on this, guys. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you, Father, that we will be sensitive, God, that we will not be as those who are without hope when we see the condition of man, we, when we see the condition of our family, but they will move us. Not only will we all be moved with compassion, but through the compassion, the heart of, uh, of compassion, that we, we will be so sensitive that through the compassion, our spirit man will begin to rise up and begin to move in faith. La man so rabakai. Father, sometimes we got compassion, but we don't have the power. 
And we don't have the power, but not because he hasn't given us power, but because we are being dominated by our flesh and we are being dominated by our thought life. You know, and those things have to be brought under subjection so that when our spirit man is sensitive, that um, we are able to access the anointing uh, and uh, the anointing because we've been fasting and we've been praying. So there's anointing. So the compassion is activating the anointing in our lives and causing us to move in that anointing to do the works of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So he was moved with compassion. He reached out, touched the skin and told him, of course, I want you to be healed. So now be cleansed. And it instantly or immediately the lepers, uh, the, the miracle took place. The leprous sores were completely, they completely disappeared and the skin became smooth and the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. So that is a miracle. That is a divine interruption into the natural uh, condition. It is a supernatural move of God into the natural. Glory to God. So we thank God for that. And the last one uh, that we're going to talk about is uh, deliverance. We're going to talk about deliverance. Glory to God. Uh, Healing through deliverance is the uh, last portion. So we talked about divine health, healing, which is gradual, miracles, which is instant, and deliverance. Healing through deliverance. Over in the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 17, uh, where Jesus... um, where Jesus healed a person who has a spirit of infirmity. Infirmity. It says, Now he, meaning Jesus, was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and, and was bent over and could in no wise raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Glory to God. Um, spirit of infirmity, meaning a demon spirit was present that kept her bent over, that kept her from raising herself up. But because of the power that was upon Jesus, uh, because of the, that power, um, when he saw her, he, he said, woman, you are loose. And so when he did, when he spoke that word, then he let, then he laid hands. So he said, woman, you are loose. He spoke a word. And then he laid hands and immediately, immediately. So that, that spirit left her, that spirit, that spirit left her because of the power that was upon him. He's upon Jesus. He spoke a word and he laid hands and she was made whole. From that hour, she stood up straight and she gave God the glory. So that spirit kept her from raising herself up. So this was healing that uh, uh, that manifests through deliverance, deliverance from a spirit of infirmity. Uh, Luke, the 11th chapter, verse 14. And he was casting out a demon and it was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke and the crowds were amazed. And so the demon kept the man from speaking. The demon, Elaman Sokota Bahaya, kept him. And when the demon was gone out, the, um, uh, he began to speak. And so, therefore, let me say this. You know, sometimes we think that the healing, that God didn't hear the prayer, or that the healing is not manifesting, it's because of a demon that's present. And so uh, there was a, an occasion where um, there was a man who had, his son was um, tormented with a demon. And uh, uh, the disciples could not cast the demon out. And so um, when Jesus was called upon, he cast the demon out. And so the disciples went to him privately and said, why couldn't we cast it out? And so he said, because of one of of the times he said, because of your unbelief. And so he also said, this kind cometh not out, but through fasting and prayer. And so. We already talked about what fasting and prayer does. It brings the flesh subject. It brings the soul subject. Gives the spirit the preeminence. Uh, In other words, the spirit man is in control. And so the, the anointing comes upon the body that has been crucified upon the altar. Now, just like a conduit, just like electricity, you have the live wire. Uh, which I can contribute to the uh, live wire can can be compared to the spirit man and the dead wire. um, You know, you have the uh, the live wire and the dead wire. Um, So 
the dead why can be contributed to or compared to the body you know you have the negative and you have the positive and so in order for the body to become a conduit you have to put it to death you have to um, die out to the flesh and we ain't talking about physically dying but crucifying the flesh so that there is no hindrance to the flow of the holy spirit that's why paul says i bring my body under and we have to do it guys we have to discipline our flesh to come subject but if not it will be in control it will do the, all the dictating to the mind and so now when the spirit man is in control um you know the, the spirit is dictating to the uh, mind instead of the um flesh and so the um the spirit man takes preeminence and the mind has to come subject because we are uh, coming to God, we are praying, we're fasting, and so the Spirit of God can now flow. The, uh, the Spirit of God can now flow, and so Jesus was anointed. We know he fasted forty days and forty nights. He he drank water, but he ate no bread, and so he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit, and he began to work miracles. Uh, we know he turned the water into wine, and and he worked other miracles after which he was anointed by God. Acts ten thirty eight. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So it is the power of God. Uh, so some, when we talk about deliverance ministry, I hear the Holy Ghost. Uh, we have to be in consecration. We have to begin to seek God through fasting because there are some things that are not going to move, especially if it's a demon spirit, not going to move except through fasting and prayer. So it's not that God didn't hear you, but now you're dealing with a, um, you're dealing with the demon spirit. You're dealing with a spirit of infirmity. You're dealing with whatever that spirit is. Uh, that has attached itself to the individual. And so we have to press in through fasting and prayer. And we see uh, this woman with, uh, with the spirit of infirmity. We see the man who was mute. And then in Matthew, the 18th chapter, verse, uh, no, I'm sorry, Matthew, the 8th chapter, the verse 16. Matthew 8, 16 says, when evening came, they brought to him many who were demon possessed. He cast out the spirits with a word and heal all who were ill. So he cast the demon spirit out. So let me say this. It, all the time, it's not a demon. Sometimes uh, there's this sickness that's present because the body has broke down. And sometimes there is a demon that's present there. And so he said he um, uh, he was casting out a demon. And um, he, when evening came, they brought him many who were demon possessed. And he cast the spirits out with a word and healed. So he spoke the word. He healed some by speaking the word. And the devil was driven out simply by him uh, speaking a word. And then uh, once that, those demons were cast out, that, that spirit that was attached, or those spirits that were attached to them, uh, once those were cast out, then healing came. Healing, yes, healing came once the demon spirit was cast out. I hear the Holy Ghost talking. He's talking to me, and he's talking to some of you. There are some situations that are hard. They seem like they're hard. They're strongholds, strongholds being demon spirits present. And once those demon spirits are cast out, then the healing will come. So we have to go back to God, back to God and begin to fast and pray. Mark 1 and 34. And he healed many who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he was not permitting the demons to speak because they knew who he was. So he says, let me slow down. And he healed, Mark 1 34. And he healed many who were ill or sick with various diseases. And cast out many demon, many demons. Many demons were cast out, and, and and because they were cast out, then the people could receive healing. A lot of times, healing will not come until that demon spirit has been cast out. So we thank God for that word. Press into the will of God, because in His will you will find everything you need. Glory to God. And so those are four levels of uh, healing. Number one, divine health. Number two, healing, which is gradual. Number three, miracles, which are instant or immediate. And then deliverance, which uh, we talked about healing through deliverance and casting out demons because those demons are blocking the healing. So I just feel that um, I'm going to stop right there. Glory to God. And I pray that um, the word of God has blessed you. Um, I'm going to stop with the teaching right there. I want to say a few prayers for healing for health and healing. And so, first of all, you know, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, 
uh, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart uh, confession, with, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you do not know Christ uh, in the pardon of your sins, I want you to pray this prayer for me. Father, I ask, O oh God, that you will forgive me of my sins. And I ask, oh God, that you will cleanse me, oh God. I, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life. I open up my heart, God. And as I open up my heart to you, Father, I turn away from my previous lifestyle. I turn away from intentional sin. And I ask that you will come into my heart now. Cleanse me, oh God. I give myself to you, Father God. Let your will be done in my life. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sin. And I confess right now, you as my Lord and my Savior. And if you prayed that prayer with me, then he is now your Lord and your Savior. You are now saved. And so I give God glory for that. I give him glory for that because he will cleanse you. The Bible says if we confess our sin, he is uh, faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, we have to uh, forgive ourselves. You know, we have to forgive ourselves for allowing fear and guilt and self-rejection, self-hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, sin, pride, rebellion, uh, to open the door to any sickness and, and, and infirmity. These things will open doors for sickness and disease. Uh, you know, we if we allow those things to rule in our life, let me say that list again. If you allow fear and guilt, self-rejection, self-hatred, unforgiveness, bitterness, sin, pride or rebellion, these things will open the door for sickness or and infirmities. So in the name of Jesus, we renounce all of these things. We let go of bitterness. We let go of, of pride and rebellion. We ask God to forgive us even for self-rejection. Father, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We left, let go of self-hatred and unforgiveness. And Father, we thank you right now, God. And, and Father God, we examine our heart for any unbelief, any doubt, uh, to your word that will hinder our healing. We say that your word is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. He says, by his stripes, you were healed. So if you were healed, then you are healed. Isaiah 53, uh, five, 5 and 6 and Second uh, Peter 2.26 or 2.24. I'm sorry, Second Peter 2.24, who himself bore our sin in his own body on the tree that uh, we having died to sins might live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. And so, Father, we confess your word over us. And we thank you that we are healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then um, if we just um, allow God to just cleanse our heart, we ask God to, to forgive us of our sins, of our forefathers, and anything that came down the bloodline. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us, even in our bloodline. We repent and ask for forgiveness and cleansing in the bloodline of sins that have come down through the blood. Um, we ask God to just cleanse us right now. Any sicknesses that have been inherited, any diseases that have come through the bloodline. Father, we decree and declare that we have been forgiven of all of our sins and we have been healed of all of our diseases according to Psalms 103 and 3. And we decree and declare that the Lord arise over our life with healing in his wings according to Malachi 4 and 2. We decree and declare the Lord restores health unto us and that he heals us of all of our wounds according to Jeremiah 30, 17. And we decree and declare that by his stripes we are healed, as I was saying earlier of Isaiah 53 and 5. We decree and declare Jesus carried our sickness and our firm infirmities according to Matthew 8 and 17. And uh, in the name of Jesus, we command every spirit of infirmity to leave our bodies, to leave our children and our children's children in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every agent of sickness working against our health to disappear in the name of Jesus. Every dead organ or um, things that had to be removed from our body because of sickness and disease. We thank you for creative miracles happening in our body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We decree and declare that our blood is being transfused with the blood of Jesus to cause uh, healing to, to happen in our bodies in Jesus' name. Every internal disorder, we thank you for order in Jesus' name. We command every spirit of infirmity to come out. We curse it from the roots in Jesus' name. And we decree and declare that our bodies are being released right now from every curse of infirmity in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that we are healed, we are delivered, we are we're set free. I rebuke and cast out any spirits of cancer that would attempt to establish itself in our lungs and our bones 
in our in, in the women in their breasts, in our throat, in our backs, in our spine, in our liver, in our kidneys, in our pancreas, skin, stomach, in the name of Jesus Christ. We cast out the spirits of that causes diabetes, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart attack. We bind it now. We command it to go. We loose ourselves from all heart attacks that's rooted in fear. We command all spirits of fear to leave in Jesus' name. We command all uh, spirits that's rooted in cancer, bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, slander of the tongue. We command these spirits to come out in Jesus' name. Uproot, uh, uh, we uproot all uh, sickness and illness um, from lupus rooted, rooted in self-rejection, self-hatred, guilt. We cast these spirits out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, mental illness must go in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear must go. Torment and trauma must go in Jesus' name. Every word curse that has been spoken, we command it to go in Jesus' name. Command barrenness to be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, Father, we thank you. You said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from all of them. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you that we're healed. Every arrow of affliction that's been sent, sent against us, everything that has been spoken in the atmosphere, diverted back to the enemy's camp in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you now, Father God, from every, for every obstacle and, and spirit of affliction that's preventing us from moving forward. We break that in Jesus' name. We thank you that you're breaking the bars of iron and the gates of brass. Every word curse that has been spoken over our lives over our home, spirit of witchcraft being done against our home and our lives. We break that power in Jesus' name. We loose the Holy Spirit in the midst of us. Take control of us. We yield ourselves to you and we thank you, God, and we count it as done in Jesus' name. And I had not planned to do all that, but we release that in the atmosphere and we take back our healing. We cast down every imagination, every negative thought. Every negative thought pattern is broken in Jesus' name. We're going to... Uh, Meditate on um, the word of God and what God has spoken concerning us. Uh, we thank God. His, his promises are yes and amen. We thank you that we have been granted access uh, by faith into the grace of God. That we have been uh, endowed with divine empowerment and enablement to do uh, the will of God for what God is asking us to do. We come against the spirit of Alzheimer's. We bind spirits of manipulation and witchcraft. We bind the spirit of Alzheimer's and loss of memory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bind every side effect and every damage that is caused to the brain cells. We decree and declare, oh God, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet that we are whole in the name of Jesus. We come against memory loss, Alzheimer's. We curse it from the root, command it to dry up and die. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we have clarity, we have strength in mind and purpose, and we thank you, God, that we are healed in Jesus' matchless name. Now, Father, I thank you for the word of God that has gone forth tonight. I decree and declare, you said, so shall my word be that go up forth from my mouth. Glory to God, it, sh it shall uh, it shall not return void, but it shall uh, accomplish what you please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto you sit. And you said, even as the rain come down from heaven, it does not return. So shall your word be that goeth forth. Glory to God. We thank you, God, that your word is going to bring forth a harvest in our lives. And we give you glory and we praise you for it, God. We thank you, God. It is already done. And we thank you for manifestation now in Jesus' matchless name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And we will be back next Wednesday at 7 o'clock for Word Alive Bible Study. God bless you and have a good night.